What's up guys, Cyber Houdini here, and welcome back to Quantum Break. In the last episode, we found out that Will had created a second time machine at the Bradbury swimming pool. But unfortunately it's broken and we need a scientist named Sophia Amaral to fix it. Now we're jumping into Junction 2. Let's see what kind of choice we have to make here. Things are really, really heating up now. As usual with, uh, you know, time travel shows and that we don't know what's happening, and what's real and what's not. Junction to a business personal. The future used to be so clear when I was reliving the past. Once I caught up to the moment I had left, that ended. All I've had to go on since then are the plan and the visions. I knew Jack would come to me. I'd seen that, but I didn't know why exactly or how it would end. There he is. You are right. My visions of the future aren't always clear, but they don't lie. Speaking of lies, Joyce is saying he's discovered his brother's time machine. We've spent 17 years looking for it, and he finds it in less than a day? It does sound unlikely. Still, we know it's out there somewhere, and we don't know what his brother managed to tell him. If he really has located the machine, why would he come here and tell you? Smart Money says he's trying to play you. Maybe, but the machine is out there. It's in our interest to find out where. Why does he want the machine? If Jack knows, I have to talk to him. Go on, this where I take control. Dr. Joyce could have provided the answer to that question. William's attitude and knowledge made him a liability. Is that angry young man going to cooperate any more than his brother did? Do you remember Jack as a close friend with that cloud of judgment? There's that this Dr. Sophia Amaral. It's not. But don't forget why we're here tonight. After what happened, our people need reassurance that we're in control. You're the man who can win them over. We can do this too, okay. Choice, so you can concentrate on your speech. I know what's at stake here, Martin. The mansion was an extravagance, but it was useful for events like the gala, and it deflected attention from our nearby R&D facility. There's Monarch headquarters in the distance there. Mr. Joyce is waiting for us down below. I hear you. There he is, right there. Whose car is that? What are these doing here? We should be set up by now. It's all on schedule. You're micromanaging again. Don't even twitch. We should go. And here you are. I had to see the lifestyles of the sick and traitorous up close and personal. And it was such a nice invitation. How do you want to deal with this, Paul? I could still try to reach Jack and make him see reason. Or I could let Hatch deal with him so nothing would distract me from leading Monarch. Okay, let's see what personal does. I've been to the past. I've tried to change things. Answer me this question, Paul. I once trusted Jack more than anybody. It was my only chance to make him understand the truth. The fuck do you mean nobody got a look at the shooter? But without me there to give the speech, my empire would start to crumble like a house of cards. I believe that with hope 
becomes a miscalculation. And as you and I are well aware, Mr. George, a miscalculation can often come a catastrophe. And that leaves me with you, Mr. Joyce. But my old friend would be a lost cause, dead and buried along with the rest of my past. Tonight is a celebration, a celebration in face of darkness. Tonight we celebrate because I promise to you that we are prepared. Monarch would grow stronger with my presence. The plan would go forward as intended. Oh, screw that. I'm going to go personal. Might give Jack a chance to escape. I've been to the past. Oh, what? No. Oh. Okay, I didn't. Yeah. Alright, let's go. Okay, I'm from choice. Martin, I'm afraid you're going to have to cover for me at the speech tonight. All right. Jack and I have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah. I can't wait until Jack and Paul face off. Powers versus powers. I've seen where this leads. I've been to the end of time, and I've escaped it all the way to 1999, when it all started. I've tried to change things, but by trying, I only made them happen in the first place. It's pretty split. Okay, we're gonna jump into the Tom, live action episode. It's breaking down. Monarch has been preparing for it. There's this thing. It's called a lifeboat protocol. And it can save us, at least some of us. You've been the face of Monarch for all these years, Martin. But let's get clear on something. This is still my ship. You're not thinking clearly. You need to trim it. You gonna go? Me? Go to a party. We can roll together if you want. What do you want? I want to steal it. Our group took things too far. Martin Hatch seems to be more important than he's letting on. Violence was because of Jack Joyce. Just it's not just Paul Serene's lackey. Step away! Right now! Liam, this isn't what it looks like. No. What's gonna happen no. with these two? He's gone! We need all points converged on Liam Burke. He's armed and dangerous. Yeah, looks like he gave himself up, but... Let's see. So to prison. Breathe. This must be his treatment. And that must be Dr. Sophia. What is he doing? What's wrong with him? The treatments, they're losing their effectiveness. They're fine. No, I need to work on something new. You should enjoy yourself tonight. You work too much as it is. I've been running tests on the temporal anomalies. I think it could be happening sooner than we I've seen when it happens. At least consider that maybe you misinterpreted something. Jack knows where William's machine is. I have to go talk to him. Martin can handle my speech. Martin. 
Sophia. Thank you. Why is she helping him? You haven't touched your drink. I am just not. I'm not really into drinking a lot, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Rough day? Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Like wow, she's actually meeting at the party. Things happen in my day. I do. Uh -huh. We had to, uh, I had to deal with some internal affairs. Internal mm -hmm. affairs. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're just gonna leave me hanging? Well, yeah, it's internal. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> okay. 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 I helped catch a traitor today. A traitor? Was that what all that commotion was about? Yeah. Okay. That was me. Who was it? I mean, hmm? Who was it? <laughs> who was it? Who, who was it? Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't, uh... What? I am not at liberty to discuss this. Well, you just brought it up. It's like, uh, well, monarch drama. <laughs> Yeah. What? Well, I guess I guess I'm just gonna have to leave you hanging on that one, for real, this time. Oh, I just thought maybe you'd wanna share it with me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use the restroom, so I'll leave you hanging here, for real. Okay. Go mingle. Yeah. Drink okay. a little. Okay. All right. Thanks. This guy is hopeless. Obviously been captured. Oh, no way. That was awkward. Dr. Rummel? Martin, I need your help. He listens to you. Paul. Is that so? I think we're in trouble, and he doesn't see it. He refuses to. I can't imagine why. I know you and I haven't always seen eye to eye, but I know you care about Monarch. You care about what happens. And if we are reaching zero state, something has to be done. And what is it we could do? You know what we could do. Truth is, Sophia, it's not really a matter of whether or not Paul will listen to me. It's that I won't listen to you. I find your approach to matters rather counterproductive. Filling Paul's head with your constant alarmism, distracting him with petty doomsday scenarios. I mean, if I'm being honest, I rue the day he gave you a modicum of function in this company. Because you said, I care about Monarch. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to prepare for my speech. What is it that you're so threatened by, Martin? I look threatened to you. I think Martin's got some plans of his own.
We have control of the presentation. Make it look good. Hey, you're Crocker, right? Hey, Crocker! Crocker! I really need to take a shit. Oh, no. Oh, come on, Crocker. Crocker! Crocker! Come on, Crocker! <laughs> Lehman Jack should have tried to break out in the van. That would have been perfect. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Over there. Where? The woman with the necklace. Mm. My money is on that. Mm hmm. It's a pretty good choice, yeah. but I'm gonna have to go with Ryan Gosling down there talking with George Clooney. Wearing his nice cufflinks, chatting about stocks. Mm. Richard, where the hell have you been? Didn't have my invitation. Oh my god, you're always losing things. I'm not losing anything. Ooh. Drama. Yeah. Wow. Uh-oh. She's going for it. No. Bam. No. Told ya. Why am I losing you so bad? Sword. I don't think I can drink, drink. more. I don't think no, I can. No, rules are rules. Rules are rules. Rules are fucking rules. Just getting this guy drunk to get some information out of him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing it. Oh, I actually ate all this. You can do it, my man. Thanks for your encouragement. <laughs> oh, oh. Nicely done. Oh. Thank you. I just wish I wasn't losing so bad. Do you want to go for a walk? Hey, 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 hey. Burke, if I have to come in there, you're gonna fucking regret it. Listen, this is just a big misfucking understanding. I'm gonna be out tomorrow. Oh, wouldn't a good word for you? I will help you climb this ladder. All I'm asking is please let me take a fucking shit. Go to the back wall. Oh, fuck, thank you, man. Thank you so much. Oh, man. Thank you. Shut up. Back up slowly. Yeah. Boom, Sharon face. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't really excited about going in the first place. Okay, why'd you go? I think, because somebody twisted my arm. Oh, yeah. What the fuck is that? Kind of looks like a dinosaur wearing a helmet. Yeah. That's a weird that's sign exactly we've what it looks like. Wh hey, where are we? Are we even allowed to be out here? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> So what would you have been doing tonight if we didn't go? What, if I hadn't gone to the party with you? Yeah. Well, I would have canceled all my other really important plans. Ah. Uh, and I would have gone back to work. I think maybe you work a little too much. Yes. But again, I... <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I, I, it doesn't feel like work. You know, I like being wired in. Yeah. Makes me feel connected. You work all the time. In fact, you're there most of the time I'm there. So, don't you think you work too much? 
Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I'm there. I guess. Yeah. Love work. Hold oh, me right shit. there! Shit! Hey, you little fuck! Hey, hey, what? All you had to do was let me in that perimeter lab. You turned on Mona. Ooh, payback speech. What was I supposed to do? You have no idea what's going on, do you? I need to get in that lab. There's something in there that I need. The lifeboat protocol. You work with Beth Wilder. I've seen you before. You know her? She's the reason I'm here. Gun still necessary? Yeah. Come on, hurry up. You're a very kind person. right up here. Oh, right. You, I got it, guys. I got it. Right. I guess you guys can't do this. It's a special talent I have. Glad it's so celebrated. Yeah, <laughs> You're welcome. Is this it? What is the life bulb protocol? What is that? Jesus. Crown undisrupted life form. Extremely hostile. Christ, that's where he is. Wonder is that what happens if they don't take their medicine? Is that from too much chronon exposure? Or it's so weird. The second machine, where is it? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I've been to the past. I've tried to change things, undo mistakes. Only to find there's no changing the inevitable. Time is just one closed loop. No matter what I do, you and I, we always end up here. 
And no matter what I do, time ends. I think you've lost your fucking mind. My mind is intact, I assure you. The memory, however... It's stretched. Like... I've seen too much. All of it blending into one. Apart from a few fragments of memories. One in particular. You and I, 11 or 12 years old, when we found that vagrant, remember? And when I arrived at the past, that was the first thing I tried to change. I went to the roof, I tried to talk him down, but my presence startled him and he fell, same as before. Anything I try to change, it just triggers the same event. We keep seeing that body. Because we were meant to. I'm not turning my back on the human race. At this point. They're a necessary sacrifice. Is that what Will was? Necessary sacrifice. Will refused to believe the inevitability of what was coming. And he became an obstacle. Answer me this question, Paul. In everything you've seen, do I stop before you're dead? to cooperate I'll be here how the hell are we going to get with this one who was he he was my mentor from uh, college and then here to Monarch. I was in uh, a bad place and he kind of turned me around. Got it. Sort of. I mean, it's, it's a ghost file. It's remnant of mass deletion. Somebody was here. We got um, Cronin Field Regulator. Wait, hold on. Holy shit, this is Dr. Amaral's report. What is it? The stutters, they're... they're increasing in frequency. What's a stutter? The more frequent the stutters, the more indicative of a fracture. Okay, and what's a fracture? Of time. Zero state, it stops, and it doesn't start back up. And the LiPo protocol could save us. I have no idea. But the, the Cronon field regulator, it is the core of Monarch's time tech. Everything is based upon it. And it, it has something to do with the lifeboat. I wonder is the regulator the countermeasure they're talking about? This way, this way! Turn. No, 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 don't, 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 don't! You'll end up like her. Fiona! CFR, they said CFR. Cronon Field oh, Regulator. Where are you going? There are Conan harnesses up here. We need them. It's probably Jack's doing.
How is he gonna beat these guys? end of episode two nice nice oh things are getting so interesting now charlie the little weasel all right thanks so many guys for watching i'll catch you all in the next one